everyone, welcome to Every Money. We are here today talking about Cisco. It's your handsome host, Seth. Paul, you did say I am floss and I have a weight loss challenge this year by Paul. I'm trying to lose 40 pounds. I'm down 20. I'm halfway home, Paul, and I'm feeling great. You're halfway home in less than half a year. I'm feeling good. And tell everybody what your prize is. Well, Paul said last January, he said I pay, he'd pay me $5,000 to lose 40 pounds. Now, Paul, I've been saying I can't lose a, oh, I can't lose a pound over the past 10 years. I just, I'm not very no, good at it. No, and by the way, whenever I hear people say that, I laugh because everything's about just discipline. Eating, eating is the most important part eating, investing, all that. Yeah. With Cisco, we are not talking about that famous song that you know and love, and Paul was just flossing to it just a second ago, uh, is the thong it's song. It's a great I song. Love it's the same thing. verse over and over. It's just three times the it verse over. That's the it. hammer. But we're talking about Cisco, the, the company. And more importantly, we're going to look at the stock, the stock price, and how the fundamentals behind the company define the stock price, and we'll see if it's over or undervalued. Now, we did a video about this many months ago, Paul. Did we? I bought Cisco because I was in love with it many months ago. And of course, with your tutelage, I'm up 53%. Well, I don't know if it's because of me, I but I appreciate that. Let's get after it. So here's the funny thing about Cisco. I'm going to pull up their chart going back pretty much to all of history. Back in 2000, and this was the tech stock. The tech stock. If you had come to me in early 2000, and I'd said to you, Cisco is going to go nowhere for 20 years, you would have said to me, you're the dumbest person of all time. You're a moron. Uh, go slam your head into a door. Are you talking about Cisco or Palantir? Which one is this? This is, this is oh, Cisco, right? Cisco. Because it, the future of Palantir. Go ahead. It hit a peak of 78, call it, and it's currently at $55 a share. 20 years later. 21 years later, guys, actually. So when people think that stocks can't go, can go nowhere, can't go nowhere for a long time, Overvaluation drives down returns. Just want to get into that. Now I'm going to go to our trusty Everything Money software. I'm pulling up the software to, uh, we're going to do our eight pillar analysis. If here at the bottom, it shows a description of Cisco, world's largest hardware and software supplier within the networking solutions sector, blah, 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 blah. So, Uncle Seth. What is the market cap? $228 billion. A PE of 22, which is an X, but a very healthy profit margin of 21%, check mark which is expected for software and hardware businesses like this. Look at their gross margin, 64%. What does this mean? This means for every extra dollar they sell, 64 cents goes to the bottom line after they've covered all their overhead costs. That's the important part. Uh, dividend yield, pretty healthy, 2.7%. So it pays out $6 billion a year in dividends. Now, for those of you who are new out there, Dividend yield is not secure all the time. You have to look at free cash flow and make sure the company can actually support the dividend yield every year. Everyone thinks it's safe, but you have to look at the financials, which is what you're here to do, to learn how safe the dividend is, okay? And a very good return on invested capital, return on assets, both double digit, okay? So that's where we stand, one X and one check so far. Pillar number three is revenue growth. We obviously want this company to be growing in revenue over the years. Barely. Uh-oh. 48.51 to 48.85. Okay. Uh, they had some increases and some decreases. So, of course, I would look back 10 years, and there's barely any growth over 10 years. Uh-oh. So one of your things you should do in due diligence and your assumptions is, where is the growth going to come from? Does that mean that a slow-growing company isn't worth something? Absolutely not. Just to factor it into your analysis, okay? Pillar number four is profit growth over the past five years. Again, barely. 10 billion, 10.22. Barely any growth, yeah. but it's there. Okay, shares outstanding, which is pillar number five? Five billion to 4.22 billion. Check mark there. So they are paying, they are buying shares back. That's allowing them to increase your ownership stake in the company, right? So as they buy shares back, you still own the same amount of shares, but the number of shares outstanding decreases. So you're owning a bigger percentage of the pie. It's like if there's 10 pieces of pie, you own one of them. They get rid of a piece. You're now owning one of nine instead of one of 10. You get a bigger piece of the profit, right? The software behind Paul is our Everything Money software. As a Patreon member, not only are you supporting the channel, which we don't need, but you're getting the software that you need to analyze the companies moving forward. And you get that beautiful discord of people all over the world talking about the stock and whether they're in now. Paul, I'm, I'm going to be excited to where you go with this because I own this. And I'm wondering if I, 
I'm wondering what I should do with it moving forward. So keep going. Yeah, so this software will help you. There's a stock analyzer tool. We'll do it at the end. It'll tell you exactly what to pay based on your assumptions. Wonderful software. It's only going up in price. It's 80 cents per day. You get the Discord channel with other 3,000 people. Trust me when I say every, it's going to be a $50 a month um, software at some point in the future. But if you buy it today at $24 a month, 80 cents a day, you're locked in that price uh, forever. So current assets over current liabilities is pillar number six. Paul. So 37 billion in essentially cash versus 24 billion in current debt. So they have plenty of money on hand to pay off their current liabilities. How about pillar number seven, which is free cash flow growth? Now here's the great news, guys. Your uncle Paul helps you out here. Free cash flow growth over the last five years. Okay, we do cash from operations less capital expenditures. I have added this line into the free cash flow statement to make it easier for you that we have to do your calculations yourself. 12.67 to 14. So the last five years, they've increased their free cash flow. And the average is, call it, about $13.5 billion. Times 20, because that's our metric. That is 20, 270 billion. What's the current market cap? 228 billion. Okay, so it's a check mark there. So why did I multiply by 20? That's the most common question we get. This is a starting point. If you have increasing free cash flow, you should be willing to pay a premium, which would be 20 times that free cash flow, right? But are the growth in this company, Paul? Not very much. Mm -hmm. So with a lack of much growth, you should pay a lower multiple. We still keep our pillar at 20, but I think you should pay a lower multiple for this company. So let's go to our stock analyzer tool. Well, first let's pull up the um, eight pillars here and it'll show you. So our software also gives you all eight pillars right here. Look at this. It tells you which ones are checks and which ones are X's. The price of free cash over the last five years is 16.8 versus our 20 goal. So is that a reasonable number? I don't know, Seth. Now, I will say our average is around 13 and a half, but the recent year was 14. So it's probably selling for more like 15 or 16 times free cash flow. This is all part of the analysis of doing stocks. Before, you were taught, look at a ticker, see if it goes up, see if it goes down. We are trying to teach you that there's a method to the madness. That method is based on fundamentals. Every investment is the present value of all future cash flows. So we want to sit there and make sure that we understand those future cash flows. So I'm going to go to the stock analyzer tool. But in the meantime. Yeah, let's head over to Mo. Mo, are people trading Cisco? I can see right now they're probably not. Are they shorting this? What's this, going on over this there? This is an interesting one. So this is looking back two years. So this is a 50% rule. You have your high back here. This was COVID that happened. But it's interesting. It fell pre-COVID, then kind of made its own 50%. But regardless, if you draw a line across... Yes, they broke through that resistance point of all of this overhang area, negative pressure on the stock. But even at this level, this is fr this right here, this green blot, ha, Joel green blot, this is from um, the end of March through June 10th today. So it really can't break between this 51 area and 54 area. So for you to, let me zoom in here and show you guys, it is making new highs for the year. But for you guys to be able to buy this thing with any confidence and get green engulfing candlesticks like that, you are going to need a lot of volume because of all of that overhang still from two years ago when it fell and then COVID when it really got crushed. So the stock is recovering very nicely. Just be careful with it. If you want to keep adding to your position or you want to get it for the first time or whatever, just make sure you're using stops on this because this thing can drop back down. And we know that when, when the market gets hit because tech has let it up, this is a part of tech. This one will be one to lead it down. So just be careful, use stops, and you should be okay. Paul, what price do you like in Cisco at? And what should I do with my 100 shares that I bought at $35? So this stock analyzer tool is currently in dev mode. It's very ugly right now. We're changing it, but I want to use it to show you what our software can do and how you calculate this. So you type in Cisco. It's going to pipe you out all this data, one year, five year, 10 year numbers on everything we need. Revenue growth, share buyback, profit margin, free cash flow as a percentage of revenue, current PE, current price of free cash flow, and then a bunch of other data here that you want to sit there and consider as part of your, hey, what about this? What about this? Let me make the assumption. So revenue growth, very abysmal. I'm going to assume 0.5% a year. Share buyback, I'm going to assume they buy back 1% a year. I want a 10% net present value. This means that if I buy the investment, I want to make 10% per year. What should I buy today to get a 10% return per year? Future PE of 15, profit, which I think is a little aggressive, but we'll keep it at 15. Average profit margin of 17%. If you look right here, it was 17 over the last 10 and five years, so I'm just keeping it there. The last year was kind of a fluke. Free cash flow as a percentage of revenue. If you look right here, it was around 27 as an average, so I'm putting that in there. And then 
multiple free cash flows 15, and I want to look at seven year analysis. I hit the analyze button, and below in very ugly format, it gives me two prices. You ready? $27 based on earnings, $43 based on free cash flow. So what's the stock currently at? 55 bucks. So according to this, I ain't buying this. Now, does that mean you sell the stock, Seth, that you own it? You tell me. Not necessarily. If you believe there is a future that's different than what I'm putting here, and there's still some growth potential, I would not sell. If you don't think there's growth potential, though, and this is pretty much what these assumptions I made are the right assumptions, I would sell. I think there's probably better opportunities out there for like an Intel or things like that. So just take profits where I'm at and... Maybe. If you don't... I mean, do your due diligence and understand... Well, you're my due diligence, Paul. <laughs> well, I haven't done any due diligence in this company. You have to understand that the normal viewer, this is due diligence and there's no when, way they're going to do more than this. When did you buy that? Well, whenever it was last... I, I'm sorry, I don't have a date on my Fidelity account, but I mean, okay. when it was 35 bucks... Because I look bucks, at it and I say, mean, say you bought it two, three months ago and you made 53% in two to three months. Bye-bye. Yeah. Maybe. For me, gone. Because of the valuation number. It's not right. It's not selling at a number I sit there and go, okay, like let's look at how much I just everything, I'm not gonna be your due diligence. I refuse to be. Yours and the viewer. What I'm trying to do is teach you how to fish. I'm not trying to give you fish. I'm trying to get you to realize there's a process out there that'll make sense to you. If this doesn't make sense to you, there are other people out there you can go learn from to talk about hype and momentum and give me a call in 20 years when you're broke. However, learn from. Yes. Learn from. I mean, you saw the chart from Cisco for 20 well, years ago. I was going to say, yeah, uh, yeah, 21 years ago, it was 54. It was almost the exact same price, a little it was higher. 75. So, so actually, oh, I see. You're right. So actually, we're, we're, we're almost at an all time high since the Great I, Demise. I don't look at that, though. I look at what's the, like, look at of Intel. Of course. That's, you're right. It's stupid to say, Paul. Well, look, it's not stupid to say. It's understandable to say, but it's inaccurate. What's your top value over there with your conservative assumptions? 40, uh, well, that's not my conservative. This is just going based on what the last 10 years have done. And that's $55. 43. $43. I mean, I look at that and say... Take profits and move on. Me, personally, I wouldn't have bought it at 35 probably. I probably wouldn't have been a buyer back. Maybe I would have, maybe a little. Actually, I probably would have been a buyer at 35 Well, we were selling puts on this company. Yeah, I might, I might be a buyer at 35 yeah. Now I think about it, because remember, these are two wide ranges. I'm not saying this is the right one. I'm not saying this is the right one. It's probably somewhere in the middle. If you can buy it for under 27 I'd probably be buying it all day. Mm -hmm. I so remember we were selling maybe take your profits, whatever it is. But yeah, I mean, say you put in 50000 and you're up... What, 25,000? Sell 25,000 to keep your initial investment. Something like that. Well, we all don't live in a world where $50,000 is a regular investment for us, like Rich Mo over here. Yeah, I, I bought like <laughs> 3,500. And it, um, so, anyway, um, so I'm going to take profits on Cisco there you go. and buy more Intel. There you go. It's Bye. just a simple discounted cash. Every investment is the present value of all future cash flows. If I told you I was going to give you a dollar a year for the rest of your life, the question is, what do you want to pay for that? That's a very simplistic way of looking at it, but that is the way every investment is. It's how much money am I going to get? And you might sit there and say, well, Paul, I own the shares. I don't get the cash. I get you don't have the cash in your hand, but you're making the balance sheet better. You're paying down debt and you're decreasing the number of shares. It gives you an increased ownership in there. And if it was ever a sale of a company, they sell it to somebody, you would get that cash. You absolutely would get that cash. It's just being stored in a separate bank account and a separate way for you right now. But you would be entitled to that cash at some point. And that's the point of investing, is looking at it as a business instead of a ticker symbol. Instead of a baseball card, it's a business with cash flow that you own a piece of. And Warren Buffett always says, once he learned that in chapter 20 or something like that of invest Intelligent Investor, that's when his life changed. And he's right. I didn't believe that at first. I'm like, what does he mean it's a piece of a business? I'm just buying a stock. This is 20 years ago when I was a moron. Now I go, yeah, I'm just buying a piece of a business. Right? Yep. That's a take on Cisco. Uh, join the Patreon below. You'll Hit the software. Join Mo in the morning, 9 a.m. every weekday. Mo talks about stock news and trading news and notes. And our live streams, the beautiful big show, the Everything Money Big Show, Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern time. You can get all three of us to ask questions. Uh, patrons, we'll see you at our fireside chats. All those exclusive videos you get. You know we love you. Thanks for joining us, guys.